people in your life that suck the energy out of you, that leave you a bit flatter every time you see them. It could be a work colleague, it could be a family member, or it could be just a rude customer. In our frantic life, it's essential to make time for those that are good for us. We need to gather around us what I call our green zone tribe. Now, our partners and spouses can be an important part of this group, but it's essential we have other people as well. Women are much better at nurturing these types of relationships. And so men need to make an extra effort to make these things happen. Let me explain by way of example the qualities required for someone to be in your group. I have a long-term mate called Ted, who I first met when we both worked in marketing at Johnson & Johnson over 20 years ago. After we left J&J, we stayed in regular contact and remained good friends. We often go on bushwalks and discuss family and life and politics and work. This photo is taken on one of our monthly walks together. Now, there's one moment in our relationship which I will never forget. As I mentioned previously, at one point I went through horrendous depression which required multiple hospitalizations. Now, I was fortunate to have a very supportive family who visited me. But Ted was the only friend who visited me in that psychiatric hospital. You never forget something like that. Now, we can talk about anything, and that is incredibly valuable. Does research support this? Well, two psychiatrists, Stephen Southwick and Dennis Charney, have researched the topic of resilience extensively. In their book, Resilience, The Science of Mastering Life's Greatest Challenges, they reveal 10 proven strategies that are key to bouncing back from setbacks and adversity. One of the most important is social support or mateship. Their research shows that people who think, as you think of when you read these questions, are the people that should be in your green zone tribe. Who could you count on to help if you had just been fired or expelled from school? Who do you feel would help if a family member very close to you died? Among your friends and family, is there someone you could go to when you need good advice? In a moment, I'd like you to write down one, two, or three names that fall into this category who are not your spouse or partner. Just take a moment now and discuss with your colleagues what makes the people that you wrote down different from your other friends. I'd be really interested to know what you feel the qualities of those friends that make them different. Please feel free to email me at the email on your screen. Now, these relationships aren't just wonderful for resilience. They've been shown to be essential for a long and healthy life. The Harvard Grant Study is the most remarkable well-being research ever conducted. The study is 75 years long and it's of 268 physically and mentally healthy students starting in 1939. There's only about 40 alive now. Each student was surveyed every second year and also went through extensive medical examinations on a regular basis. Now, the finding of this data, all this data, is that the best predictor of a good and happy life was strong relationships. The study shows that good relationships are strongly linked with length of life, lower stress, and improved overall well-being. It even showed that those with strong relationships had a lower incidence of dementia. In another research study of 140,000 people conducted by the Gallup organization, those with the highest happiness to stress ratio spend six hours per day with people they like. It's important to note that six hours includes time at work, home, on the phone, email, and social media. So hopefully you like your work colleagues because we spend a lot of time there. So for a fulfilling and healthy life, the message is clear. Schedule time for people that are good for you. Nurture 
your Green Zone tribe. May you individually and collectively go for the Green Zone every day.